Oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Let's not. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, um, How many are on, on me? There's only one. Only one. He's on your bag. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Don't lose it. He's doing it. <laughs> You would think that an island that's just 70 miles long would make getting around an easy maneuver. But when you have 4 million people and roads that look like a ball of yarn, getting from one place to the next is about as tricky as the 405 if you don't plan accordingly. We had 12 hours of daylight and we were going to try to make the most of it. We started in Denpasar, the main hub of the island, and planned to make the loop all the way north and back down again through the jungles of Indonesia. I was a bit worried leaving the city since the weather this time of year is pretty unpredictable and the forecast is perpetually useless, only showing severe thunderstorms all day, every day, literally, even if it's completely sunny outside. On the way up the island, we made a quick stop by Sari Amerta Batik Shop, which is a heritage craft in Bali. While they wouldn't let me film much, it was great to see the traditional arts and crafts of the Balinese people, which probably dated back hundreds of years. And 20 minutes later, we finally made it. Bali is known for its Hindu temples and religious peace sites, where locals gather to worship and practice Balinese Hinduism in Indonesia. The beauty of the architecture was unlike anything I had ever seen, and you could practically feel a higher level of spirituality while strolling through the temple grounds. So they said that this temple is 900 years old. Look at this. Even though Bali has over 20,000 temples, each is unique and carries a long-standing legacy for the people. Everyone is required to wear sarong or some sort of scarf slash dress, just out of respect. You can also see elders making chanang sari, which are daily offerings made by the Balinese people in prayer. I was told they make over 300 here every single day, and over a million are made each year throughout the island. How many? 300. Wow. I see them, uh, I see these everywhere. As we continued on, I became increasingly excited since our next stop was probably what I was most looking forward to. The monkey forest in Ubud is possibly the most famous attraction on the island, and for good reason. Home to nearly 700 monkeys, you can walk through 12 acres of forest without being blocked by any sort of fence or barrier. And I'll admit, most of these monkeys are really freaking cute and typically very playful if you show them something that sparks their interest. <laughs> no, 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 don't fight. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just a microphone. 
Whoa, 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 okay. <laughs> Let's not. Would you like me to? <laughs> oh, God. Um, How many are on, on me? There's only one. Only one. He's on your bag. Okay. I, okay. No, no, no. Don't let <laughs> He's stealing your. <laughs> He's like, where's that dick? There we go. There we go. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, God. All right, just stay calm. Stay calm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good picture. Okay. Uh. You could probably spend several hours here just playing with the monkeys without ever getting bored. One thing to keep in mind is you're not really supposed to make eye contact with them as apparently they don't really like that. So as long as you don't just rudely stare, you'll probably be fine and won't end up like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Our next stop was to the rice terraces of Abud, where you can still watch traditional villages farming rice along the side of the hills. And while as interesting as that is, some terraces are more like swing sets than actual farms. With late afternoon storms approaching, we decided to head north a bit further to grab some lunch before finding ourselves caught in what would soon be a complete downpour. We came to this crazy scenic buffet place perched on the top of a hill that overlooked Mount Batur, the active volcano on the island and the second highest point. And while I kind of wished our view would have been a little bit more clear, the afternoon thunderheads definitely presented a beauty of their own. Uh, not good quality. Not good play. quality. Yeah. <laughs> As we began to make our way back down the island, oh, our next stop was at a Lua coffee exhibit. What makes this coffee so special is the way it's produced. To put it simply, the beans are, well, consumed by something that looks like this little guy right here, and then pooped out to be collected and ultimately refined. Because the bean is digested, <laughs> It gives the coffee bean a unique flavor that can only be found here in Southeast Asia. Ginger and turmeric tea. This is just this normal. Is normal, that's from Bali. That is Robusta. This one is Sumatra. Sumatra, that's from different island in Indonesia. Okay. Because of the way the bean is produced, oh, Luwak nice. coffee is the most expensive coffee in the world, with this single cup of black coffee costing about $7. But I heard that prices for just a kilogram of this coffee go for about $700 in other parts of the world. It's very good. <laughs> okay, so please take your time and enjoy your coffee. This is the, uh, the one that comes from the, the poop. Yeah, the wow. special what coffee. It's uh, Luwak, we have this. Is And with most of the rain cleared up, we made one final stop before leaving Ubud to see a natural Balinese waterfall, as long as you were willing to climb down a couple hundred steps.
Even in the off season, it was completely packed. And I definitely would not want to be here in the middle of summer. Just like the terraces, up above you could see swings and villas hanging over the cliffs. And when you leave, you get the thrill of climbing back up the 200 steps you took in the beginning. But it's easily worth every single drop of sweat. I just realized that I haven't been to the bathroom since this morning and I was sweating so much despite drinking four glasses of water, four bottles of water, I never even had to go to the bathroom until about an hour ago on the car ride home. Tomorrow I have to get up at 1.30 a.m. which is like five or six hours from now so not really looking forward to that but I think getting up early and everything, I think it'll be worth it. Uh, so I'm gonna get something to eat and try to at least get a little bit of sleep before I have to get up for tomorrow because it's going to be an extremely long day. All right, good night.